All right, guys. Uh, today on the show, I actually uh, reached out to someone I found through Neil Patel's uh, new forum over on Quicksprout.com. Uh, I had started a forum thread and asked about, uh, you know, what kind of success stories people were having, and I found a lot of people that were replying that seemed to have really great websites and had a lot of interesting things going on. So I reached out to a fellow named Martin Dasko, who's on the show today. Uh, he's going to be talking about his site. Uh, I don't want to pronounce this wrong. I know if you want to repeat it, it's... Uh, Studentomics. Yeah, Studentomics. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I didn't want to screw that one up. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the show. Hey, John. Thanks for having me, my friend. And, yeah, everybody messed up the name. The problem is it was 2008. I waited forever and ever to start my site. And I, I was just making excuses and excuses. I wanted everything to be perfect. Yeah. I thought, the finally, one day, it was like November 7, 2008, I said, I'm going to start a site today. I don't care. It was a Friday night. My girlfriend was busy. My friends were out. Actually, my friends didn't want to go out that night. Nothing was happening. I'm like, I have to make it happen tonight. So I go to Bluehost. I sign up for a site. I'm thinking I want it to be clever, you know, students, economics. A lot of people like the word nomics. Yeah. I thought studentomics would be freaking brilliant. Turns out every single person struggles with saying it. I have to explain myself like five times, but hey, I wouldn't have it any other way. Studentomics, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you got to be unique in some way. I mean, I'll admit, even when I started, I had my, my site. I just didn't really know what I was aiming for, so I used my name. I, I didn't think about branding it too much. And I had a hyphen in my name because, like, my straight-up name just was not available. And then uh, I started a show, and having a hyphen, like, talking about it over audio is just really terrible. So I it took me, like, two, three weeks to brainstorm Voices of Marketing, and then I rebranded it. Yeah, it's funny because there's, there's two schools here. One is... Well, back in the day, everybody wanted to have keyword-heavy words or domains. So right. I, was, I was thinking of being boring and being like student, finances, payoffdebt.com. You know, hit all the keywords, you know, make Google happy. Right. But I'm kind of glad I went with something that's more uh, more of a brand name. More, It's more catchy. I mean, it, it, just the fact that people struggle saying it, at least they're trying to say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So do you kind of want to like share your story and like you know what your blog's all about and you know what you've been doing? I know reading your about page is definitely very in intriguing to me, like compared to a lot of other about pages I find on blogs. John, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, I've actually been working on creating the perfect about page because they say the about page is like the uh, it's like a resume. It's like where people get to know well, about you, hence the name about page. So I'm glad you read it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And to get into my story, my story is uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Like a lot of people have a really emotional story, how they uh, they got into debt, you know, they have to pay off debt, they owed forty grand. You know, there's, there's lots of different stories out there. Me, I was just always a greedy kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you that you know I was in debt and I had some epiphany. And, you know, I saw a dragon and I was you know I wanted to save money, but what? I've always just been greedy. When I was uh, when I was what grade three, seven, eight years old, I got a paper route. Just so I can buy magazines, just so I can buy wrestling magazines and have my own money. Yeah. Because I, I didn't want to ask anybody for money. So starting at a young age, I've just been greedy. So, you know, in high school I worked. I worked crazy hours. So when I, when I got to college, I thought I was going to study full time. And then I realized that studying is boring. <laughs> I'd rather right. study less and work more. So I started just, you know, I started working in college. And I still did the normal thing. You know, I went out on the weekends and on Monday nights. I went out and then I. I studied, I, my grades were up, and I just I always just wanted to make more money, so I, I always try to find more ways to make money, more ways to save money, because why, why would I want to save money? I want to have more money. Right. So I always, so I always just trying to, like, you know, I applied for bursaries, applied for awards. I always wanted to do something, to, to just have more money, be financially independent, because, like, I looked at older friends, you know, I didn't want to be in my 30s, 40s, you know, even my 50s paying off debt. So I told myself when I was, like, 17 that I'm not going to buy a car, I'm not going to move away for college, which I kind of regret, but I stayed in town, you know, I stayed with my parents, and I really wanted to graduate debt-free, so that was my goal. Like, anybody that, that knew me back then knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get my degree, but I didn't, I didn't want it to cost me the rest of my life. Because the, in the back of my mind, I always knew that I wanted to work for myself, and it is impossible to work for yourself if you have debt, because believe me, there are months where you make little money and you will lose your mind. <laughs> So yeah, going, no. Sorry, so going back to college, I just 
I was just doing this, you know, and I, I always I always had entrepreneurship in the back of my mind. So I was hustling, not hustling, I was working. <laughs> so I was working, you know, doing everything right. And then people would ask me for advice, and I I thought nothing of it because I just the way I saw it was if I if I didn't have the money, I wasn't gonna buy it with a credit card because I couldn't afford it. Why would I do that? So then people would come to me for advice, and I would you know I'd give people tips here and there. And then, then I thought to myself, you know, I had this genius idea. What if I wrote about this online, how to save money? You know, I figured this was this had never been done before. I'm gonna start a personal finance site. I'm gonna show people how to save money. Yeah. And then I went online and I realized there's like a thousand people doing it. <laughs> right, right. So then I figured if I'm gonna do this, one, I have to launch because I, I was taking forever to launch. I was just, you know. Looking at different themes, just emailing bloggers, just just you know the usual excuses, you know the usual failure to launch. So finally, like I, like I mentioned earlier, I launched, and the whole story of the site was it was just my goal to be financially free by 30. But what that means is, honestly, I don't want to work a job I don't like. I don't want to do anything I don't like. And as selfish as that sounds, it's just it's just the goal that I set for myself. So I started the site when I was 20. I'm 25 now. And my goal has and always will be to be financially free by 30. So the first step was graduating college without any debt, which I was able to do, thankfully, unfortunately, thanks to my parents letting me stay at home, you know, despite coming home at 4 in the morning. And here I am at 25, and and, and the name is Studentomics. So I was, I was kind of, I was thinking, oh, you know, once I graduate, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to grow out of the site. But I've just, instead of me growing out of the site, the site has grown with me. So now I get focused more on that next step in life in your 20s. And I've even launched a course, but like Life After College. And even more, more recently, I'm helping you know aspiring entrepreneurs and young people with launching. I, ha- I have my own service where I help you launch. Yep. So, so that's where things stand right now with me. And i got five more years, and I hope to be totally financially free by 30. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean, I, I feel like you know just going through, like, you know, I'm 28 now. And I only recently, you know, bought my first home. You know, I'm glad, you know, I wasn't one of those guys who ended up, like, being 30 living with my parents. But, yeah. you know, even looking at, like, most of my friends and the people I've hung out with being 25, like, at that age, you know, for everyone that I hung around with, it was still, like, let's just sit around and play video games or basically do, you know, go out and drink all the time and not really look at, like, you know, the bigger picture and, like, the actual, like, what's going to happen when we reach our 30s and, you know, everyone's got girlfriends or wives or whatever the case, and you know we've all kind of like moved on with life. Yeah, you really hit the na- hit 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 on the nail right there, because uh, we we all just assume that if we keep on keeping on, everything will be okay, you know. So, so like m- even like very recently, I wrote an article about what your parents never told you in your twenties uh, or about life in your twenties, and that's simply that nothing's handed to you. So I've always right. believed. I've always believed, and I and I write about this often, is that nothing ha- has been or will be handed to you. So you have to you have to work for everything. So so the problem is that most of us just assume that we keep on just doing whatever, just trying to survive, that everything will be okay, and it will be okay, but it won't be great. And who wants okay? Okay is boring. I want great. I want amazing. Yeah. So that's why I just kind of I show people how even someone like me, I'm not I'm not smart, and I, I don't do anything special. I just I just think of the big picture. So that's why the big picture of this site is is to be financially free by 30. I mean, if you start at 20, 19, 18, 25, 29, you you have an amazing chance, because because it's too late to think about being financially free at 30 when you're 30, because then you have to focus on maybe becoming free by 35, by 40. So I just kind of like to talk I like to talk about different strategies and how to like how you can still have fun. Like I love to go out, I love to get wasted, I love to travel, I love to do the same stuff. It's just you have to be conscious of what you're doing. So. One of my one of my key uh, philosophies is to pay yourself first. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see my friends making. Like, like first they want to you know they want to go out, they want to you know then they pay their bills and then they're like, oh maybe I'll save some money. But by that point, there's nothing left. Right. So when it, co- so when it comes to paying yourself first, it's like it's like getting a pay cut. It's like giving yourself a pay cut. Like I'm not I'm not sharing anything groundbreaking here, but it's a fundamental that has worked and will work forever. Just pay yourself first. Cover your cover your savings first, then pay your bills, and the rest is guilt free money. Like I don't yeah. want you to feel guilty about going out this weekend or next weekend. But on the same hand, if you save your money first, then then you're good to go. You can go out and even something as simple as twenty bucks a week. That's over a thousand bucks a year. That's a trip right there. One one of my friends when we were when we were twenty, you know, I was planning a trip, and he comes up to me and he says, "Oh, it must be nice. You know, your parents are probably paying." 
I'm like, uh, no, they're not. So he, he thought it couldn't be done. So I convinced this guy, and you know, luckily he trusted me. And I took 20 bucks off him every week. Like, no excuses, give me 20 bucks. So, at, at, you know, he lived on my streets. So at the end of, at the, end of the, the year, I'm like, hey, you have a thousand bucks, we can go on a trip. Then he's like, wow, this personal finance stuff actually works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it adds up so fast, you know. Exactly. And like, it's, it's just to think, like, how quickly that year probably flew by for him. Like, I'm sure he just, like, didn't even realize how quickly it came. And now, like, on a larger scale, if you, let's say you get paid, and, you know, you, you, you get paid every two weeks, even if you try to save 100, 200 bucks, that adds up, you know. We, we, we often underestimate what can happen over a long period of time, and we overestimate what we can what we can do overnight. We think we're going to, you know, pay off our debt in, in a couple of weeks or a couple of months and save a lot of money, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it, everything really takes time. And, I mean, I've even, you know, I'll admit, like, you know, I've dived into some pretty, like, you know, pretty big things myself and wondered whether or not it was really smart to do, you know. I actually, like, have a car sitting down in my garage that I've spent over $25,000 on, and it's, like, completely a toy. And, and there's nothing wrong I, I with that. Much, yeah, I pretty much had, like, pretty much everyone that I know just said it was a bad thing. But... For me, it was more of like a passion and, you know, deciding whether or not I want to do this when I'm like 35 and have children and it may not be in, the, in a position to be able to do what I was able to do with, you know, basically being by myself and just living at home and actually being able to spend that money at the time. And yeah, sometimes experience is the best teacher. And that, that's, why, that's why I totally praise the idea of paying yourself first, you know, covering your savings. So you said you don't have to feel guilty, you know. Like if you want to buy, like you want to buy a car, you want to go on a trip, you want to go for a nice dinner. Like I love to go out for food. I love to eat chicken. I love steak. I, I love eating out. I love to go for food. Yeah. So, so I just prioritize. I just cut back on other expenses. You know, I'm not gonna, or I'm not gonna buy a new car, for example, or I'm not gonna buy new clothes all the time. But I am gonna eat out at least once, you know, two, maybe seven times a week. <laughs> right. Right. So, I mean, like, do you have, like, some basic tips? I mean, obviously you shared, you know, your, your tactic with your friend where, you, you know, you save $20 a week and then at the end of the year they were able to go and take that money and they could go travel or, you know, do something nice for themselves. Like, what, what would be, like, some general tips you might give for people that are looking to maybe either pay down, pay down debt quickly or, you know, they're looking to save money to, you know, go on a, on a trip or travel or something similar? Yeah, yeah, good question. The the thing with me is I'm not one of those I'm not one of those people that wants to cut back all the time. So while I do try to save money, let's be honest, budgeting sucks. Like who the hell wants to budget and who wants to cut back on everything? Like you know I don't I don't want you to cut your own hair or, or wear the same shirt seven days in a row. <laughs> right. So so one thing that I often write about and and some people some people get it some don't. I believe in increasing your income. And this this could be anything. Like like I'm not one of those people that's gonna tell you, oh, quit your job and follow your passions. Like what does that even mean? <laughs> I'm gonna be homeless right. and passionate. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 I always preach the idea of increasing your income. And right away people think, oh, scam, scam, four hour work week. Well, it's not it's not about just a four hour work week. It's about it could be anything. Like, like one of my friends, he wanted to increase his income. He didn't want to work for himself, which is totally cool. You don't have to work for yourself. You don't have to do anything. So he just got a part time job. And so he realized on the weekends he would go out way too much and he got way too wasted. And he realized this was no good. <laughs> so yeah, he got a yeah. job where he worked weekends, <laughs> a part-time job, you know, something fun. Like, so he, he was working in a gym, right? So that means how, how bad is it to work in a gym? <laughs> right, right. So, so he increased his income through a, through a part-time job. And, you know, and on the other hand, recently they've been working with a lot of freelancers. I, I also run a site called StartFreelancingNow.com. I have a book on Amazon. You know, you should check that out. <laughs> so okay, been, cool. I, yeah, I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes if you uh, send me the link. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so I've been writing a lot about freelancing because while passive income is great and like you know the four-hour work week is amazing, sometimes you gotta just work and make some money. You have to start somewhere. You can't be chasing passive income fantasies for the rest of your life. This is why I preach freelancing because freelancing is amazing. You can literally do anything to freelance. Like one of the guys that worked with Justin, he's yep. uh, he plays guitar and he was in a band. His band wasn't really making that much money, but he wants to play guitar. Like he doesn't want to stop playing guitar. So I just we sat down, we figured out a plan, and now he's gonna. Well, he started doing this. He gives lessons to kids. He finds kids, 
And the reason kids kids work well is because the parents take them. And the, you know, when, when you're a kid and your parents signed you up for something, you know, they took you. You have no choice. Right, right. Some teenagers, you know, he might miss a few lessons, so he just decided to aim his freelance freelancing service on teaching guitar to kids. Another gentleman that I worked with, he likes to write. He likes to, he likes to work in sales. So we thought about it. We're like, oh, you know, it's kind of hard to get a part-time job in sales. You know, like, most cause usually sales is like a full-time. Like, you know, if you want to be a car salesman or or make any money in sales, it's it's a it's a pretty much it's a big it's a huge commitment. So instead of working in sales, he got into copywriting. So you know, he works for he works for like small businesses and other like companies, and he helps them write their uh, like all their copywriting stuff. Like, that's something that I suck at. <laughs> and I actually he did the he did the sales page for my Amazon. So if you if you end up on my Amazon page, he's the one that did that. <laughs> he's got that's a really talent, cool. He's got a talent for that. And then other people, we've like we've we've discussed all kinds of crazy ideas. And then I, and I even did some research on freelancing. And there's there's guys that are pickup artists. They teach you how to meet girls. Like you can teach anything. Like like my, my belief is, you can learn anything out there, and then you can turn around and teach it. Because the fact that you learned it means that somebody else wants to learn this. You can teach them the skill, or you can do the work for them. Right. So when it comes to increasing your income, like uh, as corny as it sounds, the sky's the limit. Because you can, as I mentioned, you can literally freelance in anything. You can and. You can freelance, uh, you know, guitar lessons, how to pick up girls, how to learn English. If you speak English, you can be a freelancer. There's somebody out there down the street from you in your community that does not speak English. There's somebody out there that doesn't know how to dance. I don't know how to dance. I got two left feet. Right, right. I, 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 this, this one young lady that I know, she, uh, she likes to cook. I can't cook. I like to eat out. So what she does is she cooks for people. And this is obviously a very popular idea because uh, there's lots of services that do this. But even something like cooking, if you like to cook, you can cook food for someone and, and you know, however you want to set up your, your monthly payment or however you want to charge them, you charge them. But what I'm getting at is that you can increase your income right now. And the best part is that the barrier to entry is zero. Literally zero. You need nothing to get started. At the most, you might have to spend some money or some time to learn how to do this service. Like if you want to be a guitar instructor and you can't play guitar, it might take you a while, for example. Right. But I believe that all of us have something in us right now, uh, some sort of a skill that we can teach. And all you have to do, I kid you not, is you go to Craigslist, go to Kijiji. I help my friend Justin with this. You go on there, and you put up an ad. You post the ad, and the ads go up for free. It may not work. It may work. You may get a few emails. You may get nothing. But like, what did it cost you? Ten minutes of your time? So if you're struggling right. to pay off your debt, or, you know, for, for me personally, I, I like to travel. So my goal is to make as much money as possible save a decent amount and just go on trips. Like my trips are anything. I, like for example, I went to WrestleMania last year. You know, before you laugh at me, I'm a lifelong wrestling fan. Yeah. So I always wanted to go to WrestleMania, so boom, Miami, WrestleMania. I live in Toronto, it's cold in the winter, why not? <laughs> yeah. And people didn't understand why I went, but they don't have to understand. I wanted to go. It's my money, my trip, my life. And I yeah, can exactly. I can and I can do things like that just by uh, increasing my income. So you can, you know, you can get a part-time job. You can freelance, then you, you can you know you can start a blog, you can start a business, but that's a whole other topic. But all I'm getting at is there's nothing stopping you right now from increasing your income. Instead of shooting hookers with uh, rocket launchers in GTA 5 or watching Break It Bad, you can you can you can use that time to uh, make some more money. And like don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with playing video games if you're into that. But what's better, playing some playing some game where you walk around shooting people or going on a real trip and and having fun. Yeah, man, it's funny you say that because um, my, you know, it's really the whole past like few years for me, I've been really more into video games because that's what my friends like to do, and I really hardly watch TV. I was mostly into movies, but um, I bought this house in June, and I, I ended up getting a new girlfriend, and she like basically only loves to watch TV, like that's her thing, like she's not into movies, so she's gotten me addicted to like all the TV shows. I mean, for me, it's good because obviously she, you know, we can watch it together, but I'm like basically, you know, neck deep now into, like, Breaking Bad, now all all caught up, and there's, like, one episode left, and then I picked up GTA 5, like, this past weekend. <laughs> well, my bad. But, <laughs> but, no, it's funny, because, like, even for me, like, knowing that, you know, I could have, I could have not scheduled this interview for tonight, I mean, right now, uh, for anyone listening, you know, we schedule this for, you know, just to give an example of my whole day, I mean, I still work a, a 9 to 5 job, but my schedule is, right now, it's 11 to 8. 
and I woke up at 7 a.m. this morning to do an interview with someone that lives in another country, and, and then I had another interview at 8.45 in the morning, and that guy lived, the first guy lived in Israel, the second guy lived in Sweden, and now I'm doing an interview, you know, I went to work at 11, I get out, I basically eat, eat dinner, maybe watch like one, one TV show with my girlfriend, and now I'm up here again doing another interview, so I've worked a full-time job, and then I've done three interviews, whereas I could have either slept my day away and not done any of those interviews and came home like probably most people do and just played video games all night and watched TV shows all night. And don't get me wrong, I, I avoided TV for the longest time until last year, my last girlfriend, she got me into all these shows, Stupid Sons of Anarchy, Dexter, which had the worst finale, by the way. And I, I totally I only watched a little bit of it. <laughs> and I totally hear you on that, which is which is why I believe in prioritizing, which is uh, like there's nothing wrong with watching TV, but did you get your stuff done? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, sorry. Well, I was gonna say even for me, like you know, I like the interviews because when I schedule things, like it's sort of set in stone. Like if I were to like write in, you know, I, I'm still sort of like getting used to it, but I'm I'm I've been pretty big on goals. Like I use Evernote for all my goal taking. But I could write a bunch of stuff in my Evernote, and it's not really going to get done the same pace that if I set up an interview, like, that's set in stone. I can't really just say, well, I don't feel like it tonight. I don't feel like showing up for this interview I scheduled a week ago, you know? Yeah, well said. That ties into another point. As you were talking, I was thinking about this. A lot of people, when they're trying to save money or when they're trying to set goals, the problem is you can have you can have anything that you want, but you can't have everything that you want. So like, yeah. I, I know that I, I would like to travel. Not everybody likes to travel. Like, like, don't get, like, like you know, all these blogs about traveling are out there, but not everybody hates home. Some people like being at home. Right. <laughs> so I totally get that. So your goal or your job is to figure out what you want to save for. If your goal is to get out of debt, you have to act like you want to get out of debt. You can't just talk about it and write blog posts and go on Facebook, go on Twitter, and then play GTA 5. You have to prioritize and make that your goal. If you want to get out of debt, what are you going to do? Are you making more money? Are you saving money? Are you utilizing your time better? Are you? Could you cut? Maybe could you even cut a subscription? Like when I when I get hardcore about my savings, I look through everything. Can I cut this? Do I need that membership? Do I need this? Do I really need a uh, data on my phone? Do I really need like you know voicemail? Do I like like recently? I, I like for example, I set out a goal. I wanted to save an extra hundred bucks a month just because I, I know I could. And I knew that my cell phone was a ripoff. I won't even tell you how much I was paying for it because it's just embarrassing. So I, it turns out one of my friends was working at a, at a cell phone provider, so my contract was expiring. I switched my contract. Yep. And I forget what the savings are, but that alone is at least like 40 50 bucks a month just by switching my plan around. And now the only thing I have is I have less data, which who doesn't have Wi-Fi? Everybody goes with Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi, in thin air, it's Wi-Fi on the street corner. Right. And I get less voicemail. How many voicemails do I need? Who even leaves voicemails these days? <laughs> huh. So, so if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna reach a goal or set a goal, you have to really be meticulous about it and, and just go all the way with it. If you wanna travel, you have to find a way to increase your savings, put more money away. You can't say you wanna travel or pay for debt and the next day go to the store and, and buy GTA Five, for example. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's sort of been like you know, taking taking everything with a grain of salt. Like, I know that there's people that are probably sitting home right now and they've probably already put, you know, 10, 15, 20 plus hours in the Grand Theft Auto, you know, because that's what people are doing. Like, and that's all they're focusing their time on. They're not really thinking about the bigger picture and thinking about where they might want to be when they're over 30 or, you know, even if they're in their 30s, they're still probably not even in that mindset and just playing their lives away. But, I mean, even for me, like, I feel like I just sort of prioritize, but I still want to enjoy those things because otherwise, you know, I don't want to be like consumed by, you know, everything to do with work, you know, and not doing some fun stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm with you totally. Like, you know, you, you got a good balance. You're doing your interviews and then you play your games after. N nothing wrong with that. I, and I totally promote that. I love, yeah. I love to go out. I love to eat out. I love to drink when I go out. So I know yeah. that I have to get everything done in the morning or I have to wake up early and get things done. Which is another problem that I find is like you know we, we tell ourselves we're gonna we'll go out first and then we'll get things done. It doesn't work like that. You can't watch you can't play yeah. GTA and then go to work because th that's what happened to me when I started watching Dexter. I'd say oh I'll watch an episode or two and then I'll write. Nah, that doesn't happen. You have to get yeah you have to, you have to get your writing or your videos everything done first and then you award yourself. And it's supposed to be totally guilt free. I don't feel guilty now when I watch TV because. 
usually I get everything done first. There are there's the odd day where you know you wake up and you just load up on Sons of Anarchy. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had like the thing that a lot of people are shocked by too is I I tend to I've actually scheduled a lot of my interviews like on Saturdays, and I've had people like you know come to me and say, well, a Saturday, like you know, that's crazy that you were willing to do it on this day or whatever, or just anything to do with like weekends because that's obviously when people like are spending free time. I know there's a fellow that I'm actually like partnering up with on a product launch that he product that he's created, and he takes like his Sundays completely off. You know, he'll watch football like all day long. And that's like his day off, but for the for me, like those are the days when I feel like I get the most done because I'm not like bound by work or my nine to five. Like I just have like this whole free day of like I can get stuff done, and including you know stuff around the house like doing laundry and cleaning and just keeping things like in line and organized. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up because because mom- momentum is also a powerful thing. Like like for myself and for for most aspiring bloggers, the biggest problem is and always has been content. Everybody struggles with writing content, so that's why I, I set a goal for myself a couple of years ago that I have to write a thousand words every single day. Like no excuses. Doesn't matter if I'm hungover, if I'm on a trip, a thousand words every day. So, wow. so something like that it keeps me focused. I know that if I write my thousand words, the rest of the day is mine. So if I wake up at six and I write a thousand words, I can watch football. I don't know anything about football, but I, I can watch hockey, for example. Cause I, I live in Canada. Yeah. You there? Oh yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought maybe you faded out there, but um, no, no, sorry. Anyways, yeah, no, um, I mean, I'm more I was more about segues. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all right. I was gonna ask, um, you know, you you, you mentioned so you're writing a thousand words a day on a daily basis. Are you writing on other blogs? I would assume is, that's not all on this site, right? Oh, thanks for asking. You can also check out startfreelancingnow.com and kettlebellrebels.com. The beauty of the internet is that there's no limits. <laughs> so, yeah, I made, yeah. so I started off with finance, which you know many people listening to this are are marketers or they're maybe aspiring entrepreneurs. It right. doesn't matter how you start the race; it's how you finish that counts. And as corny as it is, it's true. My my best advice, and I've received this from from many people, is to start right away. Just launch right away. Try to get a paying client. Try to get your name out. To try to get a get a blog out there. As you could see, Studentomics not the best name, but I love it now. I started it, and if you're if you're thinking about doing something, just do it right now. Just launch. Just to stop researching. Researching is just, is just busy work. Stop talking about it. Stop posting on Facebook. Stop reading entrepreneurship books. Stop reading entrepreneurship blogs, and just launch something. Take the next yeah, month know. and just dedicate yourself to launching. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you because I feel like even for me, like you know, I've I've spent a lot of time thinking about things, but. You know, if you're really not taking action and you're just consuming, then that's really that's really the problem. And even for me, like you know, I, I went through this loop where I was just sort of like trying all these different things, and eventually I came to the idea of doing this interview show. And um, I've been staying focused with this more more than anything the past like probably six months or so. And the, and the best but, part uh, is the only investment is your time. And yeah, we all, we all got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean. I figure for myself, you know, people work jobs for years and years and years. I mean, imagine, you know, doing this for even five years where I'm doing something consistent. I mean, obviously for you, you know, you're writing these blog posts on a consistent daily basis, which, you know, you're just bringing out tons of content. I'm sure you're, you're becoming a better writer and, you know, thinking of all these exciting things. You've obviously got different, different like niches that you can write about as well. So you have like a broad base to, you know, talk about in different topics. Yep. And I, I mentioned that I write a thousand words. That, that shouldn't scare you because not everybody's meant to write. Like I personally like to write. I also like to talk. I like to talk about myself. I like to talk and I like to record video. Yeah. So you you have to work with your strengths. If you're trying to become a blogger or you're, or you're a blogger and your blog's struggling, don't force yourself to write if you can't write. I mm. can pop out a thousand words, but not, not everyone can do that. And there's some days where I don't want to do that because writing, you know, it's when you write about the same thing every day. Like how many how many you know new ideas are you, are you gonna get? So this is why I love this idea of doing a podcast or you know, video. So if, if you're struggling right now, m- maybe you have to change the way you deliver your content. Maybe you can just like, you know, open up your uh, your webcam and record a video. And if you have a blog, upload it to your blog. And what's the worst that can happen? People are gonna laugh at you, but those are the same people that are too afraid to do it themselves. 
or even a podcast. Like, this is an audio form because I don't have a webcam on this computer. Yeah. So, yeah. for example, a po- if you can you can create a podcast, throw it out there. If nobody listens, oh well, you tried, or you, maybe you promote it better. Maybe you try something else. So don't feel as if you have to stick to writing if you want to get into marketing. You can market yourself in a variety of ways. You can go on Twitter. You can go on Facebook. It is easier than ever to get your content out there in, in this day and age. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, even for me, like when I, you know, because I love writing too, you know, and I've written some really long articles and you know, I've been able to rank some stuff on Google, like just writing great content and really like writing longer articles, you know, a thousand words plus seems to always do the best, especially with a lot of like the longer tail keyword searches. But I mean, I sort of got like burned out to a point where I was like, okay, I have a few ideas, but I, I, you know, I was sort of doing the same thing as what you mentioned. Like I was trying to blog daily and finding that it was very difficult and I sort of burned out on it after like doing it for like, like two months straight. Um, sometimes the blogs were, you know, I would literally just like do something very simple. Like it wasn't really anything in the post itself. It was so basic. It almost wasn't even worth doing. But, um, you know, I, I tried to stick to it for two months and I, I pretty much did, but I just got burned out. And then I, I liked the idea of doing these audios because it's so easy to create them and then getting it scheduled, it like sort of binds me to actually getting it done. Like, I feel like I'm, unless there's a, a critical reason, there's no reason I'm going to, you know, cancel an interview or back out on it, you know. Yeah, and I have to steal a quote from, from Seth Golding. I was listening to an interview with Seth recently and he made a good point, you know. People get writer's block, but nobody ever gets talker's block. We always got something to talk about. We True. always got some something to say, but for some reason we can't write. That makes no sense. Just start talking, and, and you know, t- you can talk in a podcast form, in a video form, or you can talk, talk into your, uh, talk into your uh, blog post. And if you're sitting at home right now, you're thinking, ah, these guys, they have all these ideas, they have energy. It's not like that. Everybody, anybody listening to this, every single person has an idea that's worth sharing with the world. I believe in you, and trust me, you, there's something that you can write about. There's a niche for everything. There's so many different topics. There's so many different random blogs out there. I have seen some of the craziest ideas work on the Internet. It's not even funny. So don't think that you have a lack of ideas or that you don't have nothing interesting to say because I'm, I'm willing to bet in, in, on any given day you've got at least a couple stories that you share with your friends. You've got something to say. Why not share this with the world and, and, see, and see what happens? I mean, you never know. You can... You can start a profitable blog and make money. You can start a new hobby, and you can you can even lead to other venues. Like for example, blogging. When I started blogging on Studentomics, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I just wanted to sh- to help people. I wanted to help students become debt free and financially free by 30. A little did I know that people actually cared about what I have to say. Like for example, one time ta- one time I got an email, and I thought it was a prank. Some ladies like, oh, we want we want you in a in the New York Times on a qu- on a post. I'm like whatever, so I got, I got on the phone with her. We talked, and she sends me a link, and I see my 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 uh, my name on the New York Times, and boom, the traffic was just phenomenal to that. Wow. Another time, I, I'm just blogging and writing about student credit cards. You know, I try to help people avoid the common pitfalls. And I get a call. I get a call from uh, Fox from Fox Business News, and they're like, "Can we have you on?" I'm like, "How does this even work? Like, I live in Toronto. How am I going to be on Fox?" Little did I know, there's a studio down the street. I showed up. And they put a they put a mic in my ear and I start chatting about I start yapping about nothing. It's just proof that if people want to listen to me, people want to listen to you. There's always somebody that wants to hear what you have to say, and why not just get it out there and share it with the world? You have absolutely nothing to lose. You yeah. can keep you can keep on keeping on, or you can just finally take a risk, launch something, start freelancing, get a part time job, start a business, anything, as long as it brings you closer towards your goals. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome advice. I mean, really, for anyone listening, you know, if you're kind of on the fence and you're not, you know, taking action or really getting started with something, I mean, there's really, there's no, there's really no excuse. I mean, you know, I know a lot of people like put off things for, you know, time or other reasons, but I mean, everyone, everyone deals with those things. You know, it's easy to, it's easy to put stuff off, but, you know, if you really put the effort in, you know, you can make it happen. And another tip I'd give on that point. This is important that if you're a blogger, if you're a freelancer, anything you want to do, you have to have somebody that makes you accountable for your actions. The biggest problem I found with, with a lot of the, the you know the aspiring freelancers that I worked with is that they thought of an idea, they told their girlfriend, their boyfriend, their mom, their their sister, 
Of course this person is going to tell you you're the best. Their job is to tell you that you're the best. Yeah, yeah. You need to find a, a blogging buddy or a freelancing buddy, someone that doesn't care about your feelings, sorry to say, but is willing to tell you how it is and keeps you accountable. You can join a mastermind group, they call it. You can join a, a forum. Anything that you do that forces you to be accountable. Accountability is key. Like, for example, my, I go to, I go to a, like an MMA-style gym, so I go to a lot of kickboxing classes. It's like the first class, you don't really know anybody, you know, you're getting used to it. And after a few classes, you get to know everybody. So let's say, you know, the next class comes around, and you're not there. These people are, they're your friends now. They got your number, they got you on Facebook. And, you know, if you miss a class, you're going to get like five texts, you're going to get people making fun of you on your wall. Yeah. And you don't want to miss a class. Same thing for blogging. Get some blogging buddies or get, a, get someone that forces you to be accountable or have a mastermind group where you meet once a week and where you're forced to be accountable. Because the biggest problem is that we usually hang out with like-minded people. So if you're hanging out with your friends that are big GTA 5 buffs, you, you know, all you guys are chatting with is GTA 5, which is fun and all, but no one's keeping you accountable to your other goals, to your videos, to your audio, to your blog posts. So if you're, if you're just getting started, and even if, you, even if you've been doing any kind of work, for freelance work for years, find somebody that forces you to be accountable. This has helped me tremendously. Like I know if I don't want to, like I have to get an article up for tomorrow. I know if I don't, I'm going to get an email blasting me. I don't want that. Yeah. Who wants that kind of shame? Yeah, and I mean, even to your point, you know, even going through a majority of my 20s, you know, I've had, throughout the past few years, you know, I really started the whole online marketing thing roughly a year ago, and, you know, talking with that about all my friends, you know, I, I remember I was actually sitting there, I was reading, I went to a friend's house and I brought a laptop over. We were all going to play, you know, an MMORPG, um, kind of like a World of Warcraft type game at the time. And I sat down with my laptop when everyone was waiting. You know, I, I had a load screen up, and I was just waiting for the game to load into another area. And I minimized my, my laptop, uh, the game, and I, I went over to uh, YouTube, and I started watching a, a video by Derek Halpern on social triggers. Awesome. And one, of my, one, of my, one of my friends, literally, he turned around, and he said, he said you got to give that shit up. He goes, wow. you got to stop trying to make money and doing all this stuff online. Wow. Like, and I was like... I, I kind of just didn't really know what to say, you know, and it's like, it, in a way, it's like I almost feel like, I don't know that he's jealous or that he's just, you know, he just doesn't have that same mindset. Like, he doesn't really, they're so, like, almost blind to the fact that I'm trying to do something that's, like, really, you know, could be really good uh, in the long term. You know, it's um, it, it's just kind of sad, really. So, I mean, you got to really consider, I mean, these are people, like, you know, that I hang out with, that, like some of them are my, my good friends, like I've known them for over 10 years, but, you know, to, you got to really consider, like, who, who are you going to spend your time with and are they going to keep keep you accountable, like you said? Yeah, that, that's really important. And Like, my, my biggest problem in the past was just hanging out with the wrong crowd. And not to say that I'm an angel, because I, 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 I can be a part of that too, but at the end of the day, you have to set your goals and associate with people that want you to reach your goals, that want you to succeed. Like when I when I got really really serious about saving money because I, w- I wanted to uh, you know travel more and just have more money because I've always been greedy. <laughs> yeah. And I had I had friends that just they just don't want to save money. And like everything they wanted to do was just toxic. Like oh let's go out let's get bottle service. We don't need bottle service. Who do you think you are? <laughs> right. You can, you know I can have fun for ten dollars. I can have fun with five dollars in my pocket. So I, I noticed that. I was hanging out with the wrong crowd, you know, not not a rough crowd, not a bad, not bad people, but when you have certain goals, you really have to align yourself with people that are either have similar goals or are going to push you towards your goals. So as you said, you, you wanted to to do your online marketing. If your friends pushing away from that, um, you know, maybe maybe you know, I'm not saying to be stop being friends with them, but maybe you just don't talk about that person with that, and maybe you find somebody else and and have them as a mentor or, or just as a, as a partner or as a friend. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially what I've pretty much done. Like, I've just been focused on finding people online that I can relate to. And, you know, like, lately I've been reaching out to a lot of people that are sort of in similar position or same place as me in terms of, like, interviews or, you know, that they've started these podcasts and things like that. You know, they're not, like, you know, so so busy in this online marketing world where I couldn't send them an email and, you know, feel like they're not going to be able to reply because they get, like, hundreds a day, you know? Awesome. And John, tell me, are you gonna are you gonna keep at this? Yeah, I mean this like I, I mean it's funny because you know um you know in terms of like 
monetizing my show, like what I hope to do eventually is actually make some sort of information product or maybe even a membership course. You know, I, I look at what a lot of the other people are doing that run interview shows. Um, and I, I recently did an interview with Andrew Warner of Mixergy, who's got one of the nice. biggest shows online. And I asked him all about it and, you know, kind of ways that he does it. And it's all in like learning. You know, every person I talk to has something different to share or something, some sort of value that they can share that's a little bit different. I mean, like I was telling you before we started, I mean, you obviously have um, a real focus here on like getting rid of debt and, you know, saving money. And I haven't really had anyone on the show that, you know, some of them may have had knowledge on it, but it wasn't something we really talked a lot about. And, and that's the, um, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, and, and that's really like the big thing is like every time I interview someone, I feel like I'm just adding that much more value. And I know that I have people that are like listening, um, you know, on a regular basis. There's one of the guys I interviewed. He tells me on a regular basis that he listens to my show. So it's like enough for me to know, well, there's going to be more people that are going to be like him that will discover my show and hopefully they'll enjoy it, you know. John, now, now you can't quit. Now you got no choice but to keep on going. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's well, the that's the beauty about getting started. Is like we're doing this. Just so everybody knows we're doing this on a Google Hangout, which is free. Yeah. So the the startup is zero. It just yep. it's just time. It's just a matter of reaching out. And you know, he, you know, John said he reads a lot of social triggers. Derek Halper. So you know, you read something on on how to how to network with people and how to how to reach out. And you use that advice and you reach out. And then boom, you record an interview for free. So all you did was take up time. You, just, you read something, you watched the video, and then you create your own, and then you share this content with the world. So my only question is, if you're sitting at home, well, what's your excuse right now? There really is none. Yeah, no, I mean, it, definitely. I mean, in that, and you really got to think about it too. You know, I, like I mentioned earlier, all I had to do was, you know, I, I found, I, I went to a place where I knew that there were successful people that hang out, um, which was Neil's forum, and I just started a thread and started asking, you know, what, what are people doing? Like, what kind of success are people having? And uh, went from there. Well, and you're smart because you want to. You you asked me to talk about myself, and who doesn't want to talk about themselves? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I figured uh, we could probably wrap this up. I know we're hitting about 40 minutes, and it's getting pretty late for me. But um, I really appreciate having you on. John, thanks so much for having me. The pleasure is all mine. For everybody listening, studentomics.com. Start freelancing now on Amazon. Grab a copy, grab five, grab ten. Makes a perfect Christmas gift, even a Halloween gift. Why not? Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time uh, out of your day to uh, come on. I'll, I'll share all the links in the show, and um, you know, if anyone wants to check it out, you know, definitely uh, check out your site. There's a lot of good information here, a lot of blog posts and content. Thanks a lot, man. Yep. Talk to you later.